All right, so there's going to be a couple key ideas to make this work, and one of them is the simulation lemma. The idea of the simulation lemma is that if we have a pretty good estimate of the real MDP, then optimizing our rewards in that estimate is going to be pretty good in the real MDP. This is a lemma about simulations, not a simulation of a lemma. That's right. It's not a simulated lemma. It's a it's a lemma about simulation, right? And so the the idea is that we've got uh, transitions and rewards that are off by alpha or less, and we want to think about what happens if we adopt some policy pi, any policy pi. We want to compare the value that we get for following pi in MDP one that has transition function t1 and reward function r1 to the value that we get, the return that we get for follow, following policy pi in MDP two, which has transition function t2 and reward r2. Okay. And if if um, if those are going to be near each other, given that t1 is near t2 and r1 is near r2, then that's going to give us the ability to have accurate simulations, right? We can use our model of the MDP to simulate what's going to happen in the real MDP. And just to be concrete, this is what I mean by the transition functions, reward functions not being too different, that we have this value alpha. And if we take the maximum over st all state action next state triples, that the probability assigned by transition function t1 and the probability assigned by transition function t2 are no, not different by more than alpha. And same thing with the rewards. So that's a little weird. How so? Well, because the transition model is probability, so that can't ever be off by more than one. Sure. And the rewards could be like gigantic numbers that could be off by billions. Sure. Billions and billions. So it just seems a little weird. You feel like it should be two different alphas. Yeah, alpha t and alpha r. But maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to proliferate variables when we didn't really need to. But you're right. The scale of these could be very different. I mean, a lot of times in the proofs that people use for these kinds of uh, MDPs, they first assume that rewards are actually all in the range 0 to 1 also. Mm. doesn't change the fact that you still might want a different alpha for the two cases. But it does at least get the scale more approximately correct. Okay. So then without loss of generality, assume that all your rewards are between minus 1 and 1. Or zero and one. Or zero and one. Why not? Because, you know, it's all the same MDP. <laughs> yeah, they look more like probabilities or something. Okay, cool. So, without loss of generality, assume that your rewards are between zero and one and your transition probabilities, which would have to be, are between zero and one, um, so that we can use the same alpha and everything kind of works out. Yeah, again, it still might be worth having different alphas, but um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, again, it's, it puts us in the, in the right ballpark. Okay, so these are ballpark alphas. So this is a ballpark simulation lemma. I'm perfectly fine with that. That is. <laughs> now we're out of the ballpark. So that's either a vacuum cleaner or um, a metal detector, or it's a gigantic baseball being knocked out of um, a park. Yeah, it was supposed to be a ballpark, but now, now it looks to me more like some kind of terrible, cruel alien. <laughs> so I don't, with, I don't know. With head issues. Anyway, the point is that it's, it's, it's alpha close to a reasonable picture. And that's alpha. Okay.